it's Al Angelo, A Plus Racing, coming to you from the auto shop. And I uh, want to go ahead and show you how to do a compression test on your Miata and what you're looking for that it's good or bad. But uh, so I run into a co common problem when I rent out spec Miatas, and that's sometimes the customers drive the things till they overheat and they just don't stop driving it till it stops running. So here's what happens on a Miata when it overheats is it usually warps the head and it warps the head and it loses compression so i can tell if it's down on compression just by the way it cranks so if i'm cranking it and it just goes ring that means it has very little compression if i'm cranking it and it's going oh, 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 that tells me it has compression but in the case of overheating it always ruins the head and there's been many times that i've gone out and i've bought a miata off of somebody pretty cheap when the original radiator cracked and they kept driving it and they overheated it i just take the head off and if sometimes the head can be saved i take it to a machine shop and they shave it um, but sometimes it's warped so bad that the head's no good so in this case i want to show you how to do a compression test a, a both a dry test and a wet test it's really easy to do it on a miata you could do this at home the tools are very inexpensive probably under 50 bucks and it'll really tell you what kind of condition the engine's in all right so the first step that i do is i want to disconnect the spark so i don't want this I don't want this engine to produce any spark while I'm cranking it. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to unplug the cam angle sensor right here. And it's just got a little button on the end of the connector. So I just push on that button and then I lift up, kind of wiggle back and forth, and it just pops right off. Okay. Now the vehicle, the ignition system is disabled and I don't have any spark. Okay, so the next step I'm going to do is I'm going to take the plug wires off. Now, the plug wires have to go back in a certain order. So this is a 1.8 liter, and a 1.8, the firing order is 4, 1, 2, 3. In a 1.6, it's the opposite. The 4 is on this side. It's 4, 1, 2, 3, okay? But if you just lay them out so that they're off to the side, you can mark them with masking tape or a little felt mark or something, but they got to go back in where they came from. So... The way that I take the plug wires off is I first I twist it and then I pop up, okay, like that. So I twist it and I pop up. And twist it, pop up, twist it, and pop up. Now, this engine's cold, um, so I'm probably going to have some lower readings than if it's warmed up. It's nice if you could have the engine warmed up, but this, this engine suffered a failure. So we're just going to look to see how bad the failure is. I already have my in my mind how bad the failure is. And it's, it's, it's not good Christmas news. But uh, all right, so I got the plug wires off. I've got a 5.8 spark plug socket that's got the bushing inside of it, okay, so that you don't break the spark plugs. So I'm going to go ahead and pull out the plugs one at a time. Now, if you pull the plug out and it's full of oil, you know, up in here, you can see there's oil on here. That that could mean that your valve cover gasket's bad also. So you're going to end up having to repair that. Okay. So we'll take all these plugs out. Um, if you ever, and this happens pretty frequently, you use a spark plug socket that doesn't have the bushing in there, you notice the plug is coming out with, um, with the socket. So that's why I do that. But... If you were to get one that didn't have the bushing, you wouldn't be able to get the plug out of there. So one trick I, I use for you subscribers is I just push this back in there. <laughs> I can tell you're impressed. All right. So that's what I do if I don't have a bushing spark plug socket. <laughs> now, what I mean by a bushing, there's a little rubber uh, padded O-ring in there kind of like, and it hangs on to the spark plug. All right, last one. That's what's nice about having a four-cylinder. Not a lot of plugs. They're easy to get to. All right, here we go. Okay, so I got the plugs. The plugs are all out. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and put the compressor tester in. And this is just an inexpensive compression tester I got from Napa. 
Um, kids use these things all the time. They destroy them pretty easily. So uh, basically all I'm going to do is I'm going to thread this in the spark plug hole. And I'm not going to tighten it very tight because if you tighten it too tight, you're going to end up uh, not being able to get it out. You're going to have to remove the head to get it out. So it's just a snug down like that. It's got a quick release. So I'll pull back to quick release, hook it up on there. Okay. What I'm looking for is 150 pounds or greater. All right, I'm trying to get this where you can see it. So anything over 150 is pretty good. And I like them to be within like 15% of each other. So if I had one that was 150, I'd want them all close to 150, give or take, you know, maybe 20 pounds. Um, the other thing I'm going to do is when I crank it, I'm going to I'm going to hold the throttle wide open. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have you guys stay out here and watch the gauge. I'm going to go inside the car. I'm going to hold the throttle wide open. Then I'm going to crank the car for about 10 seconds. All right. And so and you're going to hear it go through its cycle and you're going to hopefully see the gauge go over 150. All right. OK, you guys watch the gauge. I'm going into the car. Hey, Mike, can you hold the throttle wide open out there? Otherwise, I got to crawl into the car. You got it? All right, here we go. <laughs> Mike's already telling me the bad news. Hey, we got 30, <laughs> 30 pounds. All right, <laughs> that condemns the engine right now. All right, so, but let's just go ahead and go down the line. Let's see what we got here, okay? So that was number one. And we'll go on down here to number two. <clears throat> 30 is really bad. So what could it be? Well, it could be rings, could be valves, could be the head, could be the head cracked, the blocks cracked. All right, let's try this one here. All right, Mike, you hold it wide open. Okay. <laughs> it's, getting, it's getting worse. I didn't think 30 could be any worse. Okay, zero is worse than 30, all right? So that one's pretty bad. <laughs> Okay, let's see what we got in number three. So I can already tell you, it, it's, it's always the head. Whenever they overheat, I know right now it looks like it could be rings. It could be a lot of things. It's always the head. And I already went and got a head ready to go for this car. Okay. Yep, hold it wide open. So about 20. <laughs> okay, well, let's do the last cylinder here. I don't know if I told you guys that one of my subscribers was driving this car when it overheated. <laughs> it really wasn't his fault, but I'd like to blame him if possible. <laughs> you know who you are out there. <laughs> okay. Okay, last one. Okay. We got a good hole? Cool. So about 100. All right. So we got one cylinder is working. Which is still a little low. I, like I say, I, anything under 150, I consider bad. Um, I've had a lot of street cars that were under 150. And I can kind of tell because uh, when I drive them up hills and stuff, they don't have a lot of power. Not that the car has a lot of power in the first place. All right. So we know there's an issue. All right. 
Now, I can separate the issue from rings and valves. And the way I do that is either with a little bit of ATF fluid or some engine oil. So this one had 30. So I'm going to go ahead and put some oil in there. That's about it. Not a lot. And this is called a wet test. So what's going to happen is the oil, this ATF actually, is going to land on top of the piston. And it's going to spread out. It's going to go down the pistons. It's going to help seal up the rings momentarily. So if this comes up, up to 150 from 30, then I know that I've got a ring problem. But if it doesn't come up that much, I mean, it's always going to come up some, but not a significant amount then that tells me it's the head or the valves, okay? So let's do the compression test again. And this is called the wet test. So we'll thread this back in. Right there. Hook it up. Okay. Mike's going to hold the throttle wide open. Okay, let's see what we got. Okay, we're still at 30. <laughs> All right, that tells me right off the bat, it's not rings. Okay, so it's not rings, it's the head. So we're going to end up uh, pulling this head off. And going to replace the head in the car. And, you know, and that's a toss-up. I don't know if you guys heard, but during the 25-hour, and we're trying to forget that, that uh, I had to pull the engine out of a, out of a, a 99. We had to replace a motor. Six yeah, the six car, the, the little pisser. And uh, so we had to pull the engine out of the little pisser, and it, it uh, yeah, I had it out in 26 minutes. So it's probably going to take at least, 30 minutes to get this head off. So it's kind of a toss up whether or not to pull the engine and transmission out and do it on the floor or try to do it in the car. I haven't made up my mind which one I'm going to do. I'm kind of leaning more toward just, just pull the engine and tranny out and then replace the head outside of the, you know, when the engine's out of the car and then we'll put the whole thing back in. Um, round trip on that, that MB motor was an hour and 20 minutes. So, uh, I'll probably let my students do this one. So it means it could take three or four days. It also means that half the bolts will be lost and probably stripped off or broken. But uh, they'll give it a good try. Anyhow, um, that concludes this video on how to do a compression test and what I'm looking for. And I want to thank all those of you that have subscribed. Thank you, those uh, that made comments um, during the 25 hour. Uh, that was a long, grueling race. Um, also want to give a shout out to my... My, my two best uh, subscribers in Dublin, California, that sent me some nice emails. So this is out for you. And uh, if you haven't subscribed, subscribe to this channel. I'm going to bring you all kinds of stuff on how to keep your Miata on the front row. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask them in the comment. And I answer those videos. And I answer them back with a video. So you guys have a great day. Thank you very much.